wrench into Steelix's plans, and it force it could potentially force shorter combos and more a and a more truncated play style to make sure that Steelix is getting instantaneous value and then getting out of there. Yeah, and I'm also interested to see Steelix's use of the reflector because you know the way that Fawn plays Duck Hunt, Fawn plays a a very I guess kind of intricate use of all of her projectiles, kind of like setting up an entire obstacle course using all of it. Meanwhile, Steelix, you only have the one reflector. You got to wait for it to come back, obviously. It does, of course, have that huge, like, swinging arc to it, but Steelix is going to have to kind of prioritize what it is he uses the reflector on. Oh, huge combo there from Fawn. But it looks like she's starting to really gain that footing a little bit after a very strong start from Steelix. Getting that Phantasm straight in into the up tilt back air. Falco Phantasm is so, so good at what it does and able to break that zone into an instantaneous up tilt. We put the combos into the cans. So Vaughn is still in it, still putting on some good damage and util using the reflector on the can. Such a strong part of Duck Hunt's kit. Now this is where you gain once you force Duck Hunt to be playing behind the eight ball a little bit. Steelix is just kind of playing around center and up until that hit was more than content to play the reflector and laser game. But Font excellently spacing around that reflector in order to find a grab. Just not enough setup in order to close out the stock here. Grabs aren't going to mean much if Can is MIA. Mm -hmm. You just did that? <laughs> <laughs> Like, out here, 154, like, this is... Just getting an up tilt, and good DI to go underneath the can from Steelix, and phantasming right through the can as well. Steelix playing so well around this can so far. Oh, the crouch Ooh. under that up tilt, which didn't wasn't uh, turned around on the part of Steelix. They get back in time, though, and at 183... There it is. Ooh, okay. Finally, the back air. <laughs> like, what? what's going to do it? <laughs> like, something's got to. Falco is not heavy. <laughs> now you can finally get some momentum if you're Fawn, able to get Clay Pigeon to grab, and then set up for the perfect corner trap. But Steelix does the frame-perfect uh, neutral getup in order to get past the gunman and the trap that Fawn had set, putting them back in neutral and putting them in position for an up smash in center stage. Steelix just... True. On it. Yeah, yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just great stuff from Steelix. Staying patient in the you know in the wake of all of this set play that we see from Fawn. There we go. Finally seeing the can coming out to interrupt the combo. But I mean that's still that's still some damage. Yeah, uh, the the cost for Fawn. All right. Ooh, I love the wall jump laser there from Steelix. Just kind of uh, interrupting Fawn's rhythm once again. Yeah, that's the, the beauty of Falco Laser, right? Like One of the first things that it feels like uh, a lot of players have to learn about the Falco matchup is that uh, uh, your dive. <laughs> it, I guess the first thing is edge guard the bird. But the second thing is the fact that sometimes you don't have to care about lasers. They're there to play disruption. But in a character that relies so much on setup and so much on building your fortress into a, a bevy of traps, those lasers do just enough to throw off your rhythm. Mm -hmm. Down tilt going to be taking it. Down tilt. <laughs> Good move. Good move alert. <laughs> I mean, check this out, right? Like the, uh, if we get a look at that final stock, like there's so many of these moves that technically aren't like 100% safe on timing, but back a little bit but as we see it here like this down tilt puts out a shield grab range mm -hmm. and while there is a punish you can gain here as fawn grab is not going to be it there's a ton of them where it's like technically they are frame negative but you can't get the instantaneous punish and have to be prepared to specifically punish falco down tilt on block or like a whole bunch of other moves that do very similar things where you're at a shield grab range. You have to be prepared to punish exactly that. All right, right now, Fawn running it back. Two small battlefield for the game two, and finally starting to get that set play uh, game plan that we were that Fawn loves to go for. Once again, the can coming through. Definitely a better trade for Fawn at these percentages. Steelix now at 136. Definitely in uh, in range of death, like that neutral air right there. 
Yeah, just a strong call out too. Like no setup, no no gimmicks, no tricks. Just I'm gonna nair here because I know you're jumping in. Steelix on the warpath though gets the laser to. Oh, I love that can setup that Farn does. It's not it's something new that Farn has done, but setting up for a for just coverage of your exploitable recovery is just something that's always going to be impressive. But the down air into that back air going to close out the stock and keep Steelix well in this game and well in position to snowball unless Fawn does so first. Yep, another throw conversion from Fawn. Ooh, and the reflector on the can giving Steelix the in that he needed. Now going to be setting up some ledge pressure of his own. Ooh, catching the jump out of shield as well from Fawn. Interesting that Steelix keeps going for these back airs off stage that we've been seeing for us because it's It'll force like a stage uh, spike scenario where Fawn has to tech. But I feel like at this level of play, you can just assume that Fawn is going to hit that tech and you have to and play around that a little bit differently. Yeah, and and then at that point, you know, you're a spacey being reversaled. Yeah, and you have to use your jump and that's, yeah, that's a pretty bad situation. Yeah. <laughs> Still, we've seen uh, Steelers come back from these type of positions before after getting edge guarded himself Looking for another back air there. Once again, the reflector coming out, stuffing out the can. Uh oh, that's a huge uh, jump! Wow, just enough uh, on a reach on that uh, Firebird in order to poke out above ledge. At least get Steelix back onto stage. That could have been a very dangerous situation here for us. Instead, it is Steelix continually trying to bulldoze their way in. Four throw? Yeah. Not really much you're getting off of up or down throw at this point. You're just hunting for the stock. Yep, and there we go. There's the tech. Vaughn able to make it back to that ledge, but re uh, not uh, punishing the getup attack, but still it's able to find the follow up. 56, though, like, it, this is Falco. You're playing against Falco at zero. Like, a break grab into a down throw into forward air drag down. Still nets 46. Massive damage off of the combo break. One of the biggest weaknesses of uh, utilizing things like that is you still take the damage. Yeah, it comes at a cost. As a chip. <laughs> well. Right, frame one combo break has to come at a cost. Yeah. <laughs> And that cost is really paying the price here now for Steelix, who went for the runoff double jump, maybe trying to buffer a footstool or something of the like. But Fawn's patience on ledge and patience in mid in mid range, turning into so much advantage. The air dodge up, but Steelix gets out of that scary situation and has a chance to close out the game here with yet another ledge trap set to go. But the grab back throw not going to do it quite yet here for us. And now it's guard the bird. Just edge guard the bird. Just edge guard the bird. Rule number one. Bond taking over that game at the very end with a simple right back throw off stage. Edge guard the bird. In, ex in an extremely close oh game, too. Mad tight. With a lot of offense coming out from Steelix. But with the difference between game one and two, I feel like, Force, is the offense from Steelix would often... Be, uh, be centered around like get into the scramble for something like a trade and then follow up off that with Falco's in additional jump or extra mobility. In game two, however, a lot of those trades and combo breaks happened later into the combo. So Fawn wasn't initially, like you would get the starter, but then he'd break the combo at a piece where uh, where Steelix wasn't able to follow up mm -hmm. and turn that into a reset of neutral or in Fawn's case, another like hazard to be thrown onto the field. Yeah, and I mean, that's also kind of the cost of having that an option like a frame one combo breaker is knowing when in the string to, to utilize it. You gotta know where your choke points are at any given point because they're different per character, and Falco's got a lot of them, but if you're not ready to do so, then this bird can run all over you. Not the gun, man. He took that. No, he took two <laughs> hit. He took two shots to the face and said, "Eat this." That's the sheriff. <laughs> that, he, he, he does the, not give up. <laughs> the sheriff is in town. <laughs> oh yeah, he's so good. It's like no more ledge trap. Yeah, <laughs> get out of here. 
I like right. that down angle F tilt though, especially since hitting the can is going to extend the hitbox a little bit. Maybe give you a chance to expand on that two frame timing. But this is Fawn looking so good here. Not able to find the down air that time though, unfortunately. And instead, Steelix did find an opening, but the frame one can can be. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, reset. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, it looks fun, you know. Can up at the top of the uh, the top of the stage, going off the top. Very very nice. Self destruct button coming out. The laser hit the can on the up throw into Vaughn. So while Steelix didn't get a combo, he did get a ton of damage off of just one up throw. Ooh, and utilizing the can to Ooh. catch the high phantasm after using the gunman to cover low. High recovery. Uh, Wow. The pancake from Vaughn avoiding the back hit of the up tilt. Crazy how often, because it feels like that oh has happened goodness. twice also. Wow, you died to that. <laughs> uh, Steelix. It really, really <laughs> yeah. is. Oh, wait, I was muted. Bandito is super strong. The little short yeah. guy. Things are absolutely explosive here, but... Nothing doing quite yet. Wow, Clay Pigeon out of the corner. It feels like when... I, I, that makes a ton of sense, though, from Fawn as she uh, loses her next stock. You have a... Once you force and condition your opponent to make a little bit... Give you a little bit of space and not try and immediately and always contest can. Like, you can utilize that space to set up a trap, even if you're in the corner, and just make even more space out of it. Let your offense expand from a single point and turn it into stage control or Ws. But this combo game from Falco is certainly starting to come up. Steelix still having very much a way and a route to win in this game. It's just a matter of what he can find. That tech roll in was dangerous. I feel like we've been seeing Steelix get a little bit more antsy with this reflector in neutral. I feel like we've been seeing him throw it out like in response to seeing the gunman spawn as opposed to actually seeing the gunman fire so the reflector doesn't end up reflecting anything and Fawn just gets to continue her set play. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Conditioning the high recovery. Fawn with a little bit of a pop off and she is going to be moving on into loser's quarters up against Jen. Yeah, it's a tough set to be battling through time and time again and I think you hit the nail on the head here, Force. We just saw a lot of Force like delving into his bag of mix-ups just over and over and over again. It's like, what haven't I done? What can I do? What's different? And how much has uh, how much data has Fawn gathered? But at this end of game position, just Fawn had so much of the ledge locked down and was constantly playing around to the reflect, not just the frame one reflect, but the frame one reflects that Steelix would do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Looking good. Looking good from Fauna. She will, yeah, as you mentioned again, will play against Jen. Winner of that playing against Mega. It looks like Mega and JoJ did play the Ike Ditto. That's funny. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> kind of sad we didn't get that one on stream. That is very silly.